Hello, welcome to lesson 53, Collections in C Sharp, Part 5, Ash Table, brought to you by Ankh Pro Technologies. My name is Harish. In this session, we are going to learn what is Ash Table. C Sharp includes Ash Table connection in system.collections namespace, and this is very similar to generic dictionary collection. In the coming session, we are going to learn what is generics and also a collection in generic generics called dictionary. Okay, and Ash Table collection stores key value pairs. Suppose if you want to store some value in a Ash Table, then it stores value in this format, in the format of a key value pair. And third point, it optimizes lookups by computing the Ash code of each key and stores it in a different bucket internally. Suppose if you are storing a value, okay, and you're th you can store value in the Ash Table using the format of key value pair when you st when you assign a key and that key. Is it will be having the ash code and it will be stored in a different bucket internally and when uh, when you try to access and when you try to access the particular uh, value using the key and that key will be matched with the ash code when someone try to access that value that is the meaning of the third sentence it optimizes lookups by containing computing the ash code of each key and stores it in a different bucket internally and then matches the ash code of the specified key at the time of accessing values okay this is what about the ash table is and without wasting much time we'll look into what are the properties and methods present in ash table here is the list of properties and methods present in the ash table Proper Property includes count, item, keys, values is read only and methods like add, remove, clear, contain, contains key, contain value and get ash. Okay. Right now without wasting much time, we'll understand, we'll program using these methods for ash table. Okay. Coming back here in the Visual Studio, let us create ash table first. Ash Okay. Ash table. And I press control dot uh, sorry okay this ash table is present in system dot collections namespace so I added the namespace okay now my object name is I'll take ht is equal to new ash table okay now I initialize my object of ash table using this object what can I do I can add items to this ash table collection how do I do that I'm having a method called add method to do that work what is this method going to take input as it's going to take input as the key value as well as the key It is going to take the input as key as well as the value okay let us assign the key as one and the value to be like uh, fruits like mango okay done okay similarly I'll copy and paste in a sense I'll add some items to this ash table collection okay I would like to add two three four these are the keys I'm assigning and the respective values I'll assign here to link that like Apple banana orange orange and banana apple okay let us add only four let, let me remove the last part okay in this ash table it consists of four items in it four elements in it mango apple banana and respect key keys are one two three four to it okay once I'm I once I'm uh, once I've added the elements to this, how do I retrieve back? It's very simple. Coming back to presentation, here we have um, some other methods. Before jumping here, or, uh, let us see how to retrieve back the elements. It's very easy. Like if I want to see the value which is present in two, what I have to do is I have to just call that uh, object name and I have to pass the key value to that. Okay. When I do that, and when I run this program, you can observe it just gives me the value which is stored in the key one. That is mango. I guess in this example yep yes let's wait for that my program is being analyzed okay once it is done it provides the output telling us mango yes I got it now this is what we accessed the value which is present in the key one how did I do it's very simple I have to call that object with the flower with the square brackets followed by the key within the brackets within that key we have to pass like one okay once I'm done with this what is my next objective 
uh, suppose if I want to access uh, similarly if I want to access the second one okay uh, it's very simple obviously it will give like apple and mango okay this is what if you want to in access individual elements then you have to call the object flower brackets within the flower brackets you have to pass the key this is how you access individual elements suppose if you want to access if you want to iterate this loop this collection then we'll make use of for each loop okay okay to iterate this loop uh, will the we have an implicit type keyword called var and the item name this is the variable name I'll take it as like uh, um, ash list I'll name it as hash list okay and the collection here is HT okay now instead of uh, for this variable we are giving like a uh, return type as var instead of doing that we have to if you want to iterate this hash table we have to make use of dictionary entry um, struct to iterate this hash table so um, instead of using impl implicitly typed var what we have to use we have to use dictionary entry to iterate this hash table okay now uh, how do I print this key and value it's very simple um, I'd like to make use of uh, placeholders also in this program okay the placeholder is zero here similarly if I want to print the values it's very one okay now what I have to do I have to call this hash list uh, variable then I have to use dot operator then I'll get a key property similarly if I want to use the value hash list um, dot operator then value okay this is how we literate this hash table but the, the important thing you have to keep in mind is you have to instead of using the implicitly type var as the variable as the type of this variable we have to call the dictionary entry struct okay uh, now when I run this program you can observe the keys and the values present here see key is 4 orange 3 value banana apple and mango but it is storing in the descending order it's not storing in the ascending order by default when you try to access the elements which are present in the hash table if you store in the ascending order also when you run the program it will give you in the descending order by default okay this is what about the hash table is and we learned how to add items and how to retrieve back uh, if you want to get an individual element then we have to call them by the key name key value then if you want to iterate the loop itself hash table collection itself then we have to make use of the type the variable called dictionary entry struct type okay you have to name here instead of uh, where we have to make use of dictionary entry okay this is what about the hash table is okay right now we'll uh, concentrate on some of the methods like remove clear contains contain key okay suppose in my program if I want to remove the fourth value okay how do I do that it's very simple ht dot remove what is this remove method taking input it's taking input as the key suppose if I want to remove banana then I have to pass the key as 3 okay now when I run this program if this remove method is working fine then it has to remove that third part so it has removed that banana here with the key itself okay you can observe here no banana got printed on the output okay this is the use of remove method coming back and we have some clear method it removes all the elements from the last hash table we'll see it later and we'll see, see some other methods like contains contains key and contain value okay we'll understand these things let us remove this okay suppose if I want to cross verify like whether this item is present in my hash table or not then we have a class to do that work the class is contains it, it is taking a value as key okay suppose if I enter 3 we are cross verifying whether three val the value with the key 3 is present or not now when I run this program since this contains is uh, return type is bool we have to store this in some uh, variable called s okay now if I print that variable it will give me the output as true or false okay okay so for example here the key with, uh, the, with the number 3 is present obviously it will give true okay when I run this program you can observe it will give the value as true suppose if I am trying to enter the value the key as 5 which is not present here okay now what is the output we are going to get obviously it will give us false because this contains is of type bool it has to give only two values whether true or false that's what it did here okay now we will try to access other method called contains key okay what is this contains key what is this input taking it's taking input as key only 
whatever the contains work it's similar to contains key also we'll enter here two year okay now we obviously we have the key two year when I run this program it has to tell me yes true because the value of the key value 2 is present in the hash table as well as we are checking cross verifying here also it's present okay this is about the contains keys for example we are checking with the value how do I check with the value it's very simple contains value here we have to pass the value instead of the key so for example let us pa let me pass mango here copy paste and paste here okay I have to forget the in the semicolon. Okay, when I'm done, once I'm done with this, now what I'm doing is I'm checking whether a value called mango is present in my hash table list or collection or not. So I have to use a method called contains value to do that work. If it is present, it will give me true. Obviously, it is giving there because we have a value called mango present in our hash table collection. Okay, so this is what about the hash table is. And finally, jumping into the other method called clear. Okay. Um, okay what does this care okay to do with the clear what we'll do is um, we'll just remove some of these things okay um, we have a method called count let us count before clearing let us count uh, what are the values present here and once we clear all the elements are going to be removed here okay um, now let us count the values present here once we are using this clear method immediately let us check whether we have the elements present in the hash table or not obviously we'll get no elements present because clear method clears all the elements from the hash table now when I run this program we'll get the count as 4 and 0 because before the clear method we had um, elements called mango apple banana and orange once we use the clear method all these elements are gone values are gone so it's giving the count as 0 okay finally um, okay we dealt with all the methods and properties and finally thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to anchor training below